Thanks everyone for coming today. It's, it's a real pleasure to see such an extensive and large audience for a, a viral hepatitis day here at Burnett. It's, it's, it's really pleasing to see the interest and enthusiasm in the room. Um, as we all know, Australia is aiming uh, to eliminate hepatitis C as a public threat uh, by 2030. We have our recently launched national strategy, which has some um, rather loose aims and goals in there about making significant progress towards this target, reducing mortality and morbidity, addressing stigma and discrimination, and minimising the personal and social impact. But really sitting behind our national strategy is the World Health Organisation global targets around hepatitis C elimination by 2030. A 90% reduction in new cases of hepatitis B and hepatitis C. 80% um, of, um, of treatment eligible people um, having received treatment for hepatitis B and hepatitis C and a 65% reduction in mortality and morbidity associated with these diseases. So we're often asked in the sector, um, how are we going towards these targets? Margaret alluded to earlier that we've been identified as one of 12 countries that are on the way to the successful elimination of uh, hepatitis uh, C. So the Burnett, with the Kirby Institute and a range of partners from across the country, from research, community, clinical and government um, partners, have produced this year um, a progress report on how are we actually going, collecting indicators from across the country, with major sections on what are we doing around reducing new infections, how is our data looking around ensuring people living with hepatitis C know their status, those who know their status and are diagnosed or referred to care? What are our indicators around stigma and discrimination around hepatitis C? And also, how are we going in terms of access and continued access to high quality harm reduction services to prevent acquisition? This is going to be officially launched next week at the Australian Australasian Viral Hepatitis Elimination Conference in Sydney. But this is the first sort of snapshot of some of the data, just a very brief snapshot of some of the data that's contained in the report. It will be available as of next week on the Burnett website, and we've produced a whole range of hard copies as well that can be distributed after that. So we know Australia's done extremely well since listing DAAs on the uh, PBS um, in March 2016. To the end of 2018, about 70,000 people have been treated, about a third of the people living with chronic hepatitis C population as estimated in 2016. But we also know that the rates of DAA treatment uptake have declined over the last two years since that listing. And that increased efforts to engage hepatitis C affected population in testing and treatment are needed. So this report comes at a really pivotal time where we've made significant early progress but we really need to maintain that progress over the next decade in order to meet our targets. So I'll just step through some of the indicators in the report that, um, that we've produced. These are data coming from um, people who inject drugs clinics and um, clinics that see high case loads of gay and bisexual men. Um, and we've seen over time incidence reductions the rate at which new um, diagnoses are being made at these clinics, which is really pleasing. It's a difficult thing to measure, hepatitis C incidence. We need repeat testing over time. Our access surveillance network links these tests over time and we've seen some really pleasing declines in the incidence of infections detected at these clinics. In relation to people knowing their status um, and testing uh, data, Again, these are data that come from um, people who inject drugs clinics and uh, clinics to see high caseloads of, of gay and bisexual men. While, these while the PWID clinics do see a range of um, people, um, they are services that specialise in OST, NSP, um, so they're, they're really good sentinel sites for looking at the rates of testing over time. While the number of people attending these services has increased those red bars, the actual proportion that are being tested for hepatitis C RNA um, antibody, sorry, has declined over time. Sorry, antibody and RNA. We've also seen increases in rates of testing at the high caseload gay and bisexual men's clinics. But these declines in testing, I think, at, at the um, community clinics that see people who inject drugs is a real concern. These clinics 
the proportion positive at these clinics is between 15 and 20 per cent. So even seeing a whole range of people who may be at risk or not at risk of hepatitis C, these are sentinel sites for testing and treatment. Uh, we don't want to see testing rates uh, declining over time. We should be seeing them maintained and increased over time. Data from the Australian Needle and Syringe Program survey also suggests that those reporting testing in the last 12 months has really gone nowhere over the last six years or so. And when we look at the testing data uh, through, the, uh, medic, um, through the MBS, and these are, these are tests that are associated with diagnosing um, hepatitis C, not related to the monitoring of treatment. So we've isolated those tests that are associated with case detection. Again, after the listing, we've seen a significant decline in the number of hepatitis C RNA tests being conducted across Australia. So all of these, these testing data are saying similar things. In terms of ensuring people who are diagnosed with hepatitis C um, actually get care, um, as I said, we've done extremely well over the first couple of years with over 70,000 um, people treated in, um, and accessing treatment. Um, those uh, numbers vary by state, so they're the numbers, the bars there are the numbers by state, and at the top um, is the proportion of the estimated um, population of people living with hepatitis C who have been treated in each jurisdiction. So there are variations across jurisdictions, some doing well, some doing less well. And along with the Doherty work around the mapping of, of hepatitis C, we really need to understand the geogra geographic distribution of testing and treatment. Um, to really be able to ramp up targeted services and tailored services for where we're doing uh, less well. This is data around treatment episodes that comes from the same data set from um, a 10% random sample of PBS data compiled by the Kirby Institute. And again, we've seen that rapid decline in the number of uh, treatment episodes um, over time, um, but also as we would sort of expect and, and to some extent want, we, we've seen a, a substantial decline in those getting treated through specialist services, but the GP and other clinics like primary healthcare services have not sort of filled the gap. As this has declined, the number of treatment episodes occurring in primary care and general practice has remained relatively stable. And we know primary care um, is going to be a key area for testing and treatment going forward in Australia. We need to make sure that those numbers increase over time. This is very pleasing data from um, the Australian Needle and Syringe Program survey that shows the number of um, uh, respondents reporting uh, ever accessing hepatitis C treatment over time. And we've seen a substantial increase in the proportion uh, from 2015 into the DAA period now to 2018. So that's really pleasing. In relation to the monitoring of stigma and discrimination, this is a, real, a really nascent area um, and um, it's still in its infancy in, in relation to the reporting. So there's been work done by the Stigma Indicators, Indicators Monitoring Project led by Carla Trelaw to simplify the measurement of stigma and discrimination across a range of settings. Um, this is early data from 2016 and 20, 2018 um, that Carla's group conducted. We would like to see this survey um, distributed much more widely as a part of research projects so we get a much broader cross-section of the experiences of stigma and discrimination. But you can see we've still got major issues. You know, in terms of that, um, sometimes, often or always um, uh, experiencing stigma and discrimination, you know, about 30% of people living with hepatitis C experience regular hepatitis C related um, stigma and discrimination and well over 50% of people who inject drugs regularly experience discrimination because um, of their injecting drug use, which is um, yeah, a, a terrible situation. And when we're thinking about the testing and treatment data that I reported earlier, this is a major area that we need to overcome in order to drive people um, to, or in order to make people feel comfortable accessing services, disclosing that they are a person who injects drugs, or disclosing that they um, are at risk of hepatitis C and being uh, recommended to test and be treated. So what does the modelling say? Um, 
There is some variation in some of the modelling outcomes that have been produced recently. So the Kirby Institute uh, modelling uh, looks at the incidence and prevalence infection uh, targets and goals and concluded that under, they did a uh, pessimistic, optimistic and intermediate model around uh, the numbers of treatment episodes that would, they projected would be uh, offered over the next decade or so. And under an optimistic treatment scenario of maintaining 2017 levels of treatment, which is extremely optimistic based on the, on the uh, data I showed earlier, so maintaining levels at over 21,000 a year, but also an intermediate uh, treatment scenario of maintaining over 13,000 treatments a year, that we were on target to reach our hepatitis C elimination goals. One of the problems here, as I identified earlier, is the number of tests that are being conducted. How likely is it that we'll be able to push this many people through into treatment on the basis of our declining uh, testing numbers and the numbers that are currently being tested? So our more recent modelling that takes into account data right up until the, to the middle of 2018, where we looked at um, factoring in the testing rates as they currently occur in Australia, we found that testing would need to increase by 50% on an annual basis for us to reach our targets. On the current status quo line, we are going to fall well short of our elimination targets. Unless we increase testing by 50%, that will get us to our WHO elimination targets. That equates to about 28,000 RNA tests a year over the next decade or so. And to put that into perspective, the average annual number of tests between 2016 and 2018 was a little over 23,000 nationally. So that includes that period um, of people being worked up uh, for um, treatment in that, um, that early period of 2016-2017. So for those who are able or who are um, going to be in Sydney next week at the uh, Australasian Viral Hepatitis Elimination Conference, please join us for the official launch of this report um, on Monday evening. And um, just some acknowledgements around this report. This, took a, this is the um, Hollywood movie set of credits in terms of everybody who is involved in the collection and compilation of this data. I would especially like to thank Anna Wilkinson the word herding cats gets thrown around way too frequently, I think, these days, but her efforts in pulling together all of this data and negotiating with all the data stakeholders to bring all of this data into a single report for the community and for government and for researchers and clinicians to see in a single place um, was phenomenal. And she's been working all weekend to get the uh, final report due today. Um, and I'd like to thank you know, everyone on that, on that slide for their contribution. Thank you.